All right. <clears throat> so we have here um, front braking system for my 84 LeBaron town and country woody convertible mm -hmm. anyway um, one of these calipers was getting hung up or might have been the line might have been the caliper I'm not sure so I'm gonna replace both and show you guys how to do that um, apparently when I'm when I was ordering this there's a uh, There's two styles. There's a one bolt style and a two bolt style. This one is a one bolt style. As you can see right here. This is the only bolt that actually holds the caliper on. And basically, because that one bolt's down there, up here, the caliper kind of hangs up underneath this bracket here, and that's kind of how the top is held in so it won't you know move back so all you do is undo that bolt which I have conveniently already loosened that's why it's so far out and then once you undo that bolt you just want to pry down here you should be able to get that caliper out of there as you can see it's kind of it kind of hinges out like that And then your caliper will be undone. Bling. So there's taking off your caliper from your brake, or from your brake mount, your caliper mount. And then if you're just doing your pads for this, uh, it's super easy because the pads are just held in. Like these are the slides. So as your brake rudder wears down and your pads wear down these will slide in like that so you can just pop out your pads by just sliding them out like that and you're gonna have some clips down here hopefully those clips back is just kind of like a spring tension just so they don't slide as much most likely I don't know if new pads come with those springs but if you can keep them intact definitely keep them intact because probably lots of rattling and stuff there's the one pad here's the other and as you just noticed the rotor kind of is just free now so if you're doing pads and rotors come on bed see that little spring tension definitely helps and now I've set the caliper up here because you don't really want to let it hang. It's not the best for the rubber line here. So as you've seen, like the rotor is just loosey goosey there. So if you're doing the rotor too, once you take off your pads, it's just as simple as popping that right on off of there. So now you got access to like your hub and everything else like that your half shaft, whatever else you need access to. But anyway, so if you're just doing pads, I'd give these, you know, if you got a wire brush, give these a good brush in real quick. That way it can slide a little bit easier. Same with this one up here. And then, so I'm taking off the caliper and the, uh, the line, just, uh, just killing two birds with one stone, I mean. These things are so cheap. Why the hell not? And like, I think parts for both of those. Like, I think a new caliper and a new line was like 50 bucks. So, so if you have a, if you're doing the line before you've taken the caliper off, hopefully you haven't done that part yet. <coughs> um, you might want to just crack this bolt just because it's a little easier when uh, you know, this isn't just flopping everywhere. I've already cracked it. So, I know it's not too uh, too difficult to do. So then, what you're going to want to do is there, well, again, hopefully these 
things will still be on. This, this car's from 1984, so they're not always there. <laughs> Luckily, this one's pretty low mileage, so I do have all these things here still. Um, this thing's not normally, like it's usually. Get a better line here. This thing's usually more upright, but I just stuck this bolt in real quick just to give you the idea. Now it's all so you just take this bolt out, pop that out, and now this line is pretty well. It normally would be loose if this caliper wasn't. Being all taut on here. There we go. So now this is all loose here. Should be able to just pop it out. There's a little tab in there that goes in this hole back here. Right there where my fingernail is. And then, so once you got that undone, there's also a. You can see this tab here. I've got it pulled pretty much all the way out. But what you're going to want to do is. It's going to be wedged way in there. You're going to want to take a screwdriver, pliers, whatever you need to do. And that tab right here just will pull out. Ah. So there's what the tab looks like. And that just slides in. So when you take it out, you just going to want to pry it out. It's probably going to be in there pretty good. Just going to pry that out. Pop that out, set it aside with your bolt. And now you basically, this line is ready to pull out. So you just have to undo this guy here. Might be really rusty. <laughs> um, luckily, again, because this car really hasn't seen much uh, winter or anything. It um, was actually pretty simple for me to get out, but I'm a, I'm a cheater in this situation. <laughs> but so, the best thing you can do if you have the tools, try not to use like an open-in, an open-in wrench like that. Try not to use those. those. When these things get really rusty, they uh, basically this... This nut right here will uh, rotate separately than this line. But the trouble is, is that what will happen is these basically things will fuse together with rust. And you'll notice they'll start turning this, but the line will start spinning with it, which is not a good situation. So bust out some PV blaster. WD-40, whatever, rust penetrant oil you want to try to use in there. And you just kind of want to kind of loosen it and just kind of spin it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And hopefully if you get lucky, you'll break that rust barrier. And this will start spinning independently of this actual line. If you're not lucky, this is going to start spinning, and the line's going to start spinning. And as you keep on turning, or you keep spinning this off, it's going to sp keep spinning this line. Eventually, that line's going to twist, and it's just going to go and break. And then you got to replace this entire line, which, again, is not fun. You got to custom bend stuff, and just made a lot more work for you, but sometimes it happens, you know. That's the way it is. But so, instead of using an open end wrench, what I like to use is they have these wrenches specifically for this, which is a line wrench. So you get a little bit more um, grabbing area. I'm lost for words today. You get a little bit more surface area because you, you're you on you know, more parts where the wrench would actually connect. 
Well, I can only record such a large video size on my phone because it's probably just too high quality. Anyway, use this line wrench on this line here when you're first trying to break it free. That way you won't, you run less of a risk anyway. I mean, if it's really seized on there, it's going to be hard either way. You run rest, less of a risk of actually rounding out this entire thing. So I've also got that loosened up, ready to go. But when you replace these things, you're obviously going to want to grab a, you know, just a container to catch it because you're going to have some fluid come out of there. I mean, it's unavoidable. So, um, so when you crack this, Try to be quick about it, you know. Try to take this out, take this line out, take this part back part of the caliper out. Try to replace it, you know, reasonably quick. That way you're not gonna lose a bunch of fluid. You're gonna have to bleed the brakes. I mean that's it's unavoidable, so but the the less amount of air you introduce in the system the better I guess. So I'm gonna do that now and then Basically, the install process is the exact reverse of that, so um, hopefully this helps you out and you know now how to replace the lines and the caliper and the pads and your rotors. Um, if you want to, when you're putting the rotors back on, or the pads back on, you can grease this right here just to make it not rust as fast and it slides right there you can also try and even grease the this part of your caliper and you can actually grease like this mating surface here um, it kinda quiets it down a little bit so I mean these things technically have little like quiet pad thingies on them which is this part right here that's flopping around. But, you know, it's worth a shot. Why not, right? It's not going to hurt anything. Alright. Uh, hopefully this helps you.